For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Again this week, the Pepsodent Company presents another in a series of broadcasts to our men in the armed forces throughout the United States. Tonight, for the women of the Navy, the waves, and the nurses at San Diego, California, the Pepsodent Show, starring Bob Hope and our special guest, Cary Grant. Thank you. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob San Diego Naval Base Hospital Hope. <laughs> Telling you waves and nurses that as you go about your official duties to use Pepsodent, you'll never have artificial tooties. <laughs> well, here we are at the San Diego Naval Hospital. What a great reception I got when I arrived here today. These nurses took one look at me and came rushing to me with blood plasma and oxygen tent. <laughs> and I don't know whether these girls all got a chance to have dates over Christmas or not, but when I arrived, one of them said, look what's coming through the gate. Too little, too late. <laughs> yes, sir, they have waves here. You know what a wave is. That's a whack with salt water in her blood. <laughs> It's very hard to choose between the wax and the waves, but the waves are very pretty. They must be, anyway. It's the first time my drool ever had white caps. <laughs> These waves come from every state in the Union. There's a lot of northern girls here and a lot of southern comfort, too. But, but these waves can't forget their girls. I saw one wave who had such long fingernails, every time she saluted an officer, she cut the medals off his chest. I called up a wave I used to know here, but I found out she's married now and has four little ripples. <laughs> That's not so funny, but it's cute, isn't it? <laughs> and the girls here live in permanent dormitories and sleep in bunks. You know what a bunk is? That's a bookshelf with a mattress. <laughs> It's wonderful in those dormitories. The service is like in a good hotel. <laughs> yes, sir. If you want breakfast in bed, you press a button and an arrow points to the nearest psychiatrist. <laughs> of course, the waves and nurses don't wear powder and lipstick when they're working. They're the only branch of the service that go unarmed when they're on duty and keep their heavy artillery for shore leave. <laughs> And the waves here had a wonderful Christmas party. You should have seen it. It was the first time I ever saw a Santa Claus with legs like Betty Grable. <laughs> and the girls did all right on Christmas gifts. I don't know what they got, but one truck turned over bringing presents down here. And in two minutes, it flooded seven miles of Highway 101 with Chanel number no. five. <laughs> the, driver, the driver of the truck felt bad about it, too. He couldn't go home to his wife for three days until he got the dreamy look out of his eyes. It's the film you feel on your teeth that makes your teeth look dull. Pepsodent toothpaste with irium removes that film, uncovers the natural brightness of your smile. You see, Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains irium. It loosens film and floats it away quickly, easily, safely. And when film is gone, Pepsodent toothpaste brings new brightness to your teeth. No wonder more people than ever before use Pepsodent toothpaste today. No wonder it's number one with the men in the service. Try Pepsodent toothpaste for just one week. 
See if your teeth don't feel cleaner, look brighter. See if it doesn't uncover that natural brilliance of your smile. Get a tube of Pepsodent toothpaste. And remember, Pepsodent and only Pepsodent contains Zerium. Dear Miriam, sweet Miriam, now she's using Irium. Up and down the street, all the boys repeat. Some smile. Well, naturally, Thank you. well, of Some course. smile. Thank you. When Wendell now said Pepsodent, that's what he meant. And here comes Francis Langford. Singing No Love, No Nothing. That was Francis. Well, Francis, you have a nice Christmas? Oh, just wonderful, Bob. And I can't thank you enough for your lovely present. It's worth more than $5,000 to me, and I'll treasure it forever. Oh, it's a nice present, all right. I guess that shows you what kind of guy I am, Francis. It really does, Bob. Gee, not many fellas would walk up to Frank Sinatra and pull his bow tie right off his neck. <laughs> well... Well, that Crosby will do anything for money, you know. <laughs> oh, I meant to ask you, Bob. What's that tiny box you sent me that has stamped on it, keep in a warm place for 60 days? Well, I just couldn't get you a pair of nylons, and the clerk said silk stockings were the next best thing. Bob, you don't mean... Yes, if those two silkworms know what they're doing... <laughs> They sell. <laughs> I haven't heard from their agent lately, but I imagine. 
Tell me, Francis, did you like that party at my house Christmas afternoon? Oh, it was wonderful, Bob. But there's a point of etiquette I want to make. At the entrance to the dining room, you should have had a butler. A butler? Yes. Not a cashier. <laughs> Well, well, I don't charge my friends if they hold membership cards. <laughs> Are you going out New Year's Eve, Bob? Yes, I, I'll have to try that. I'm going out if <laughs> Professor Kelowna manages to get a girl for me. Hello? Same to you. <laughs> who, who is this? This is Hope Kelowna. Who? Hope Kelowna. Hope Kelowna. Hmm. Didn't know I had a sister. <laughs> Look, Kelowna... I thought you were out trying to get me a date for New Year's Eve. I am, Hope. That I am and how I am. Oh, Professor Kalula. Oh. <laughs> oh, Professor Kalula. Oh. Kalona, I thought you were getting a date for me. What are you doing? Holding auditions. <laughs> You get pretty good parts, don't you, huh? <laughs> Kelowna, what's the matter with you anyway? Well, Hope, I never told anybody this, but the day I was born, I was dropped down 29 chimneys. When you were born? <laughs> when you were born, you were dropped down 29 chimneys? How come? Stark had hiccups. <laughs> well, look. Professor, get busy. You're supposed to be getting me a date for New Year's Eve. Yes, Hope, and I've got one for you. She's beautiful. Got big blue eyes and soft brown hair. And you won't have to spend much money on her. You think she'll be a good date for New Year's Eve? Certainly. <laughs> you see? She'll even bring her own drinks. <laughs> What about it? Double crossed me, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Really, I'm very interested in these wonderful young waves and nurses, Mr. Hope. You know, I was once a nurse myself. <laughs> I was. And Robert Taylor was my patient. Really? Did you recover? Say, <laughs> with uh... With all these waves and nurses in San Diego, Miss Vega, it looks like you'll have to take a back seat while you're here. Oh, I don't mind. You don't? Well, that's the first time I ever saw you willing to take a back seat. Well, why shouldn't I? There's not a back seat in town that hasn't got a sailor in it. <laughs> I must tell you, yes, Mr. Holmes... Hope... You should know if anybody is here. Quiet. What did I say? I won't repeat. I, I must tell you, Mr. Hope, I love your Christmas party. Oh, goodness, all the eligible bachelors in Hollywood were there, weren't they? Yes, but it wasn't a Christmas party, Miss Vay. It wasn't? What was it then? Well, after you arrived, it became known as Massacre Under the Mistletoe. <laughs> oh, my, bless your heart, Mr. Hope. <laughs> I wish Santa Claus had left you in my stocking. It could use a new heel. Well, Miss Vague, have you made any of uh, your New Year's resolutions yet? Oh, yes, I have, Mr. Hope. 1944 was the indifferent Vera Vague. Cool, aloof, waiting for the men to come to her. Well, what happens? <laughs> well, what happens if they don't come? It's back to the flying tackle again. <laughs> but really, truly, I've made some wonderful resolutions. I've positively decided to quit whistling at men. You have decided... Yes. you decided to quit whistling at men, huh? Oh, yes. It's hard enough to run them down. Why should I give them warning? <laughs> about men so much. What's that? The hills, Mom, the ear. 
Did this fall out of your nose? <laughs> other hobby. Well, have you thought about antiques? <laughs> yes, but you just aren't my type. <laughs> Look, no, but I don't care. I'll still take my boyfriend, Waldo. Oh, Waldo. Tell me, Miss Vague, how is that little drink blotter, huh? <laughs> is Waldo going to turn over a new leaf this year? Uh, no, not exactly. He's going to turn over a new label. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to see what's on the back of old granddad's picture. <laughs> It'll probably be him, Miss Vega. I'm afraid Waldo is getting in a rut. Oh, Mr. Hope, Waldo never gets in a rut. Waldo never gets in a rut. Of course not. If he can't find a gutter, he just stays up all night. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> he had a wonderful Christmas Eve, though. I sat up with Waldo and we played gin rummy. <laughs> I just died laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Waldo isn't very good at gin rummy. That's why you were laughing, huh? Uh, yes, you, I told him he was a pigeon. You know what he did? He flapped his arms and flew out the window. <laughs> He was more Jimmy than Rummy. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Say, Colonna, you sound muffled. You're in San Diego, aren't you? Yes. Phone booth is underwater. Yeah. <laughs> well, Colonna, you're supposed to be finding me a girl. Where are you? I'm, uh, I'm at the burlesque show. You're in a burlesque show? How are you getting me a girl there? Got a bear trap on the runway. <laughs> Colonna, two weeks ago you told me you were at a burlesque show. I know, Hope, and I'm still sitting here. Two weeks sitting at the same burlesque show? How do you explain that? Gum on my seat. <laughs> ah, but I'm, I'm really here trying to get you a girl, Hope. Here comes one told me now. What do you know? She's a Ubangi. Colonna, what makes you think she's a Ubangi? Using her lower lip for a fan. Stop fooling, Colonna. Get me a girl for New Year's Eve. Just find her and bring her to me. She must be beautiful, blonde, about five foot two, and very, very affectionate. Beautiful, blonde, five foot two, very, very affectionate. And when I find this girl, hope you expect me to turn her over to you? Yes, Colonna. <laughs> Always glad to be the tourist. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. And now, by request, the Jerry Colonna singing from Cheetah. She was a handsome young Irish lad, and she was a Mexican beauty. It was Fiesta, and I might add, romantically he was on a duty. A boy and a girl, and neither the has a tar as a hum. I can tell it in a sickest for a bar. <laughs> His heart went bingo when he saw the rose of Juarez. Oh. Conchita, Marquita, Dalita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita, Lopez. Oh, you're a lovely thingo. For me, there's a bunch of wonder girl, he said. Oh. Conchita, Marquita, Dalita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita, Lopez. Yes, she won her heart one night with a serenade beneath the moonlight. My senorita, will you marry a man? New Jersey was never like this. The bells began to ring off, and they rode away on a mule. To prove I'm not joking, if you are in Hoboken, drop in for a minute and you'll me Conchita, Marquita, Dalita, Hip Hip Pierre Bip, Rita, Juanita, Otto. Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains irium. 
And Pepsodent toothpaste with irium removes film that makes teeth look dull. It loosens film and floats it away quickly, easily, safely. And when film is gone, Pepsodent toothpaste with irium brings new brilliance to your teeth, uncovers the natural brightness of your smile. So get a tube of Pepsodent toothpaste with irium. Remember, Pepsodent toothpaste, because only Pepsodent contains irium. Dear Miriam, sweet Miriam, now she's using irium. Up and down the street, all the boys repeat. Some smile. Thank you. Some smile. Thank you. When Wendell now said Pepsodent, that's what he meant. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. I have a special surprise for you. One of Hollywood's most charming and talented actors, recently seen in RKO's Mr. Lucky and soon to be seen in Destination Tokyo, and once upon a time, Mr. Cary Grant. Oh, well, look it, look it. Uh, please, please, <clears throat> please, we have to talk too, you know. I want to talk. Say, say, uh, Bob, Bob. Yeah. Do, uh, do all these beautiful girls work around here? Yes, Kerry. They perform various duties around the hospital. Around the hospital? Yes. You, uh, got an extra flu germ on you? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the script once in a while, and we both have a fever. Look, uh, aren't they cute? It'd be nice to have a couple of dates with them, huh? Oh, go on. They're too busy. Oh, they could find time to tarry with Kerry. <laughs> But they'd be wasting their time to mope with hope. Yeah. Say, I knew these girls here would like you, Carrie. You're a real general. What do you mean, general? Well, you heard how Grant took Richmond, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Well, wrap up San Diego, brother. It's yours. <laughs> hey, I've seen you on the screen, Carrie. Tell me, how did you learn a kiss like that? Practice, Bob. Practice. Constant practice. Yeah. What do you do with your old targets? <laughs> Seriously, though, Carrie, I've always had a lot of admiration for your technique in making love. Well, it's nice of you to say that, old man. <clears throat> uh, come to think of it, come to think of it, your lovemaking technique has always fascinated me. It's provoked my curiosity. My lovemaking has provoked your curiosity. Yes, yes. Where did you pick up such an unusual style of combat training? <clears throat> uh, it's no use talking, Bob. Your approach is all wrong. Oh, my approach is bad, eh, Carrie? Yeah, now, uh... <clears throat> I've been practicing that Charles Boyer technique. You have, Yeah, huh? now, for instance, when I meet a girl on the street, I remove my hat, bow low, and say, Vous êtes très joli. Vous êtes chic. Vous êtes charmant. I see. You just let the charm vous out of you. <laughs> Say, so that's, that's the way you go about it, huh? Nice and slow? Sure, sure. You work too fast, Bob. Girls don't know what you mean when you run up, grab them by the hair, and yell, Boy, what a hunk of cheesecake! <laughs> well, look, Carrie, do you think if I had more polish, I could get parts like you had in Mr. Lucky? You played the part of a gambler in that, didn't you? Sure, Bob. I'd bet on the drop of a hat. Yeah, well, I once played a gambler in a picture with uh, Dorothy Lamour. You did? Yeah, I'd bet on the drop of a pin. Say, uh... <laughs> Did, uh, <laughs> did you enjoy playing the part of the gambler? Bob, gambling doesn't pay. Let's just show the girls what happens when two country boys come to town. Oh, that's a swell idea. Wendell Niles will play the part of the gambler, and you and I will play the part of the two hicks. Okay, Bob, but don't bother changing your clothes. Do no. <laughs> Stan, play a little gambling music. You know, something like all or nothing at all. Anything else. Uh... Sir, here we are in San Diego, boy. Sure is a long way from the farm, but it sure is exciting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure would like to spend me some money and have me some fun. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> Oh, no! He does it better than me. Hey, you know... You know, Lem... 
Yep, yep, yep. You know, Lem, I don't care for these here city girls. Why, what's wrong? Don't you like their looks? Not the ones that give me. <laughs> You're not doing so good yourself, Lem. You need a shave. I know. I didn't have a chance this morning. Ma was using the bread knife. <laughs> You shave with a bread knife? Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of ashamed. We ain't got no good silverware. Yeah. <laughs> you look bad tonight, Elmer. You're so pale. How come you're so pale? <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to get a laugh. That's a straight line. It says right there. <laughs> well, how come you're so pale? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so pale. I just finished milking and I ain't wiped it off yet. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me. Is, is that milk on your face? Yeah, Bessie's getting too old to aim good anymore. Gosh, Elmer, I, I sure wish we could find something to do. Yes, sir. Hurry, hurry. Come on in, come on in, boys. Try your luck on the Wheel of Fortune. Gee, gee, Willikins, Elmer, a Wheel of Fortune. That's right. Step up, young fella, and let it blow the hayseed out of your hair. Nothing doing. That's the only part that combs good. <laughs> Hey, fella, where are the waves around here? Where are the waves? Don't worry about women. Hey, you're a couple of smart-looking boys. I'm smart. I'm looking. <laughs> hey, where are the waves? Yeah, where are the waves, Hill? Hey. Say, I can tell you're from the city, fella. You kind of smell nice. Well, I can tell you're from the country. You kind of smell, too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you... How about a little gambling, fellas? Well, okay, but I'm warning you, though. Once I start to gamble, I don't know when to quit. It's just bang, 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 one quarter right after another until the whole dollar is gone. I'll tell you. <laughs> well, we got money. I'll show you. I'll open my wallet. <laughs> you see, this is also where I keep my Kleenex. <laughs> Say, you, uh, you seem to be a pretty intelligent fella. Yep. In my class at school, I was a moron. <laughs> the moron? That isn't good. Wasn't my class. <laughs> Oh, we're wasting valuable time, boys. I'll deal the cards out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I say, how about you? What have you got? I got three aces. Oh, shucks. You just beat me out. I only got two pairs of kings. Yeah. Well, that's right. For a minute, I was afraid you didn't know the game. <clears throat> say, say, how about betting on something me and Lem's good at? Whoever gets the next wave that goes by to kiss him wins ten bucks. Okay, it's a deal. See you in a few minutes, fellas. Well, here she comes. Now, I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> Uh, hiya, babe. <laughs> oh, you didn't do so good. Well, I'll try my luck. <clears throat> hiya, babe. Okay, Lem, now you dress up like a wave and let me win ten bucks. <laughs> All thanks to the memory of 1943. Prepared for victory As waves were on the job Replace a gob to fight a sea And we thank you so much Well, folks, old 